Hey, welcome back. In this video, we'll look at implementing reasoning uh, in code. I also want to share a very interesting story about why I started Ready Tensor, the motivation behind it. And it's actually directly related to this concept of modularity and reusability. So we'll get into that, but first let's look at code implementation. All right, so in the lesson, we covered these three reasoning strategies, chain of thought, react, and self-ask. And I assume these are easy to follow, how these, these various strategies impact the behavior of LLMs for various tasks. In the implementation, it's actually quite easy to integrate these. In fact, it took me less than half an hour to implement these in, in the, the repo that you've seen. Uh, there are three changes. So first, we have a config file. This is a YAML file. You can call it an app config. And in it, we have these three strategies defined, right? So we have chain of thought, React, and self-ask. And the exact text here that you are seeing, those instructions that you are giving to LLMs around how to go around uh, performing or responding to your prompts, uh, this is directly coming from the lesson. Okay, So you can change this if you want, uh, but these represent these three strategies. The next change, uh, pretty trivial one, is in our uh, prompt configuration, all we have is a new key called reasoning strategy. And it would be one of these possible set of values, chain of thought, react, or self-ask. Or if you didn't want to use them, then uh, you can set it none or exclude this key altogether. Right. Finally, in the prompt builder that you've seen, I showed this briefly in last lesson, but there is an element here near the end, which is around the reasoning strategy. And if the configuration template says to use a particular strategy, then we inject the text that you just saw around the instructions for the reasoning, right? So that is it. It's pretty straightforward. Again, the reason it's easy is because of this modularity of how you're building these prompts together. And it's just in one place you do it, and it handles for all the tasks, right? So I won't run this, but uh, you can. I have already run this. Let me show you the outputs of that. So first, let's just take a look at the prompt that was generated. Uh, this is continuing on these examples from the last lesson. So uh, we, we've seen five examples. Now here we'll see the sixth one, which is uh, with this reasoning strategy added near the bottom, right? Here's chain of thought. And we are instructing or uh, giving, guiding the LLM that they sh it should use LLM, it should use chain of thought to uh, provide the answer. All right, so that's the prompt, and the response is this one. Now I've looked at it; I, it does feel better than what we had from example five. Maybe uh, you can take a look at it and see if you feel the same way. Of course, when we get into later sections of this program where we look at evaluations, uh, this will become more more uh, uh, statistically proven. But at, uh, right now, it's just manual checks, and it does feel like it's a better response from the LLM once we use chain of thought for this particular task, right? So again, pretty straightforward to implement, and um, hope that that was useful for you. All right, now let's talk about the, the motivation for starting Ready Tensor. So as I said, uh, this is really related to this, this idea of modularity, reusability of um, anything that you build, any solutions that you build. So in the previous company, in my previous role, I was responsible for driving uh, adoption of AI throughout the company. Uh, this company had multiple product groups, in fact, dozens of product groups. They had grown through acquisitions all over the world. And my job was to work with the product groups and help them accelerate their AI adoption. Uh, in my role, I found out that there are three separate groups in the company that have forecasting solutions. And the funny thing is most people working in these groups were not even aware that these other forecasting groups existed and you know they're doing similar kind of work. That's a side story, uh, but that was interesting. Now, later on, another group within the company came to me and asked that, hey, they need to build a forecasting engine for their particular product, and if I can help them with that. And I said, we don't need to build one because we already have forecasting solutions in the company, and I'm going to check which one of them best meets your need, and we'll just use that. So uh, you know, the group was very uh, happy to hear that because they wouldn't have to build something now. Uh, I went and talked to the product owner of the first group, which had a forecasting solution, and asked if we can uh, extract that engine, the particular logic of that, the model that was built into it, and use it for this particular case. And they actually laughed at me. Uh, you know, they said, Abu, this is not built in a way. It's very deeply embedded in our application. Uh, so it cannot even be extracted out. But also, it was built for a very particular use case. Uh, cannot really be used for anything else. Right? So I was disappointed to hear that. But then I went to the second group and asked the same question, got exactly pretty much the same answer, right? So uh, cannot be used. Uh, we built it very bespoke for our, our own needs. 
third group, same answer. So I had to get, go back to the product group that had requested to build a forecasting engine and said, look, we're going to have to build from scratch. And none of these engines, they were built to be used for anything else, right? Now, again, I'm not criticizing this company because they had grown through acquisitions. Each of these products were built independently uh, when they were separate companies. And of course, they were not expecting to have this product, their, their solutions be used for anything else. But this is a common problem all over the world, right? Problems, the solutions to them keep being reinvented all over the world. It's happening all the time. And imagine the, the waste, right? I can tell you pretty confidently that each of these solutions that were built within the company had thousands of hours of time, uh, uh, ingenious time that were spent on them. And yet we cannot reuse any of the work for any future needs, right? But when that happened, literally within a month, I quit my job and I started working on Ready Tensor. And the mission for Ready Tensor is to be a platform where the global data science AI ML community can share their work share it in open source, transparent, reusable manner so that the other, other people in the community can benefit from that work. And that's why we exist. That's the mission. That's the vision for us. And I hope uh, you understand now why I keep talking about reusability and reproducibility transparency in AI ML projects. Hope you found the video useful. Uh, we'll, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.